just thought the word piece. I'm going to. It's there is music to it. Um, it's a, it's an album that uh, actually Alexandra, who's here, my cohort in music and many other things, a great inspiration. She's with me. She helps me with the music. So I'm gonna. Anybody that sends me an email, I'll send them the, a copy of the backing as well. So I'll, with that, I'll start. I'll put the glasses on, otherwise I can't read it down. <laughs> okay. Let me know if you can hear me or not. Okay. This is a true story of the Pendle Witches. Rising resolutely and regally, Pendle Hill gazes down on the surrounding countryside, appearing at dusk or early dawn as some sonorous sperm whale, rounded head and straight but descending back of a ridge. Blackened borders below formed by dry sandstone walls, blackened by 400 years of waiting and watching. Those tried and accused of witchcraft lived in the solemn shadows of Pendle. Twelve souls belonging to either good or evil. It was in 1612 in a country torn by the pernicious pursuit and punishment of Catholics under a king, James I, a king with an obsession that devil worship and witchcraft were right. It was in this year that ten people died as a result of his obsession. Lancaster Castle, a grim yet elegant edifice dominating the city of Lancaster, a crown court to which the accused were brought to be tried, if we can call it that. They languished in filth and in human condition, conditions for four fettered months. The cells, the septic cells where the accused were kept, were a literal hell on earth. Housed in the bowels of Lancaster Castle, men, women and children were kept in the same cells. A single block of rotting wood was a seat, two planks of wood a bed. No toilet facilities existed, just the floor. The floor to be cleaned by the inmates. Mother Dandai died in these inhuman, unholy consignments. There were no windows. To the outside, light came in from two candles on a wall in front of the four cells, and all available inside the cells all light available was what penetrated the cells from those two candles, day and night. In these diabolical, dreadful conditions, 12 human beings were kept entombed, all because of the obsession of two men and the words of a child. The daughter of and sister of the three of the accused, Janet Device, Thomas Potts, a clerk in Lancaster Crown Court, wanting to impress the king, and Roger Knoll, a magistrate, with a land dispute, which he lost with one of the, one of the 11 accused, Alice Nutter. All 12 were Elizabeth Device, her daughter Alison Device, her son De James Device, Alice Gray, Catherine Hewitt, Buck John Bullrock, Jane Bullrock, Isabel Roby, Anne Redfern, Margaret Pearson, Alice Nutter, Mother Dendike, and Mother Chattox. Apart from Alice Nutter, all the accused were pitifully poor and under the heel of unmerciful unfairness. The two key supposed witches were Mother Chattox and Mother Dendike. It was likely that the mothers Chattox and Dendike were simply healers of animals and people using herbs and plants, rivals almost certainly. Their abilities with plants and herbs probably helped confirm the belief that Chattox and Dendak's magical, diabolical abilities were infernal. The trial at Lancaster Crown Court was dramatic. Janet Device, nine at the time, presented whilst placed on a table in front of a court and judges. Her mother, Elizabeth Device, was removed from the court at Janet's behest after becoming very agitated on seeing that her daughter would testify against her and her family. Mother Chattuck, for all her supposed evil and powers, fell to her knees at one point, begging for mercy for her innocent daughter, all to no avail, there was to be no mercy. Of the twelve accused, ten were judged 
to be guilty and sentenced to be hanged by the neck until dead. One was sentenced to be pilloried after suffering inhuman and barbaric treatment for months. The last party's proof had any of the accused that had supernatural powers, they would surely have escaped or taken revenge. The towns and city which loomed large in the lives of those accused of being witches bear a rugged beauty. Warley Abbey, the seat of ecclesiastical power, magnificent manner of Catholicism until defrocked by Henry VIII. John Paslew, the last abbot, was executed, and mythology, sorry, mythology has it that the previous rival, whom he condemned to a slow death, came back as a wizard and executioner. St. Mary's Church at New Church in Pendle, where the eye of God gazes down from the steeple. According to legend, the witch's mother chattered and mother Demdike took body parts from here to use in spells and incantations. Alice Nutter's family are buried here in this church on a hill under the gaze of Pendle Hill. Myths, legends and superstitions over ages have permeated this ancient land. Those superstitions were likely the cause of the death and unmarked graves of ten human beings. May they rest in peace. That's it.